Mm, well done. I still have to roll though to see if you beat what it does. You do! Congratulations, Per. You narrowly avoid being grabbed by another invisible tentacle and hauled up into the air, along with Kip. Uh, and then meantime, as that is happening, you dodge this this thing, and the the other tentacles tries another bone breaking squeeze on Daras or, or sorry Kip. So Kip, go ahead and roll me a d20 and a minus two, please. Ooh, that's not good. That's a critical fail. So. Um, we're gonna roll in response to see how what the combination of this is here. Uh, oh boy. All right, and then we're gonna roll. Thanks. And we're gonna, oh, okay. Uh, you're gonna take 11 points of damage and you're gonna get constricted in this thing again and it's gonna, it's gonna try to crush your bones. So you're gonna, you're gonna take a, a sizable, uh, so just go ahead and type minus 11 in the little red bubble. Uh, on your token there to kind of change the hit points to the right number. There you go. Oh, I didn't even have to math. Nice. Yeah. So uh, you get uh, you get constricted into this thing and it knocks the wind out of you. Um, so go ahead and give me one more d20 uh, at no modifier. Are you fucking oh, no. serious? So as you get constricted, um, the wind is knocked out of you, and uh, unfortunately on your next turn, you're going to have to roll to see if you can gather your senses enough to kind of retaliate after just having the wind crushed out of you. So, we now move on to Kifi, Saji's turn. You are still on the back of Dimps during this engagement. Uh, you're riding Dimps into battle while he plays music. Uh, yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, I am going to, well, will it use a whole turn if I jump off of him? No, you can use that as an action if you want. Uh, like a but reaction. Oh, as a react. Okay, so I can't. I I can still have a main action then. Yes, you can still do something. You can choose in this turn to jump off his back and then do something. Okay, I'm gonna jump off his back and then I'm gonna try and cast a firebolt at this thing in the sky. Not the invisible tentacle, but the thing that we saw connected to the tentacle. So you're gonna the center mass, this thing that looks like yes. it's rooted into it. You're gonna aim for that. Yeah. Okay. And you're gonna shoot a fireball? Yeah. Okay. Could, um, nothing could go wrong. Nothing. No, no, obviously not. You, There's you're not water around like, us. This is totally Not with these hot safe. fire rolls. We're good. Yeah. You're specifically summoning a ball of hot flame to launch at this thing, right? Nah, I'm I'm thinking more like like flamethrower hands. Oh it's gonna be a long distance for a flamethrower. Is, is, is it a good distance? Yeah, it's not gonna. It's not gonna really do much. You get the sense it's far too far up. You need to use something like either beamy or like a, a ball of something. You know. Okay, we're gonna do a flaming ball of death. It'll be great. All right, cool. You're gonna try to summon a really powerful flaming ball of death at a minus two on your d20. <laughs> so roll that d20. Let's go ahead. Let's just do it. Ooh. What in the actual shit is happening right now? <laughs> Why is this? This is like all of Dylan's roles last week. <laughs> all right, cool. Huh. So you try to conjure a, a fireball, and uh, oh, this is fine. you're like, uh, uh, and uh, instead of shooting a fireball at this creature, um, you shoot um, like a, a pinata ball. It like looks like a fireball, but it's actually like a pinata. And when it flies up there and impacts with the creature, um, it kind of explodes into a bunch of confetti. Um, and the little pieces of confetti are like all little, um, so they look like little uh, fortune cookies, uh, like inserts. And each piece of paper says no on it. So you, you shoot this fireball uh, pinata into it and it explodes on impact and showers a bunch of little pieces of paper that say nope on it uh, all over the place. And then the boss kind of responds in anger to this impact. And uh, that's about all you do. So meantime, in the oh. interim, it's Azaman's turn. And uh, and he's going to come sh uh, running in 
And uh, on Dimp's turn, uh, Dimp is going to just keep drumming away. And he's going to keep looking back at his friends like, the fuck, guys? And uh, and so he keeps doing that on his turn. And so on Osmo's turn, he comes running over and joins Azaman. And then we return to Prue's turn. So Prue, what are you going to do now? Okay, so um, I'm I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and get Kip out of there again. I'm gonna try with another two-handed swing at this invisible tentacle thing. Okay, it's made its way significantly up more into the sky now. Um, so you're gonna have to like leap and do it. I'm, I'm gonna try and get it like a pinata. All right, so you're gonna kind of like jump overhand it. Yeah, think like you know, like a like Kobe. I'm gonna take a running start and just like flying leap, both hands, trying to smack this thing. Okay, cool. So I want you to roll me a d20 and a plus four because you are very agile and incredibly experienced with that stick of yours. Oh, <laughs> she's quite experienced with it. <laughs> Why? Yeah, Bruno says to handle that? stick. All right, so Prue, you go ahead and uh, and try to overhand into this thing, and uh, you hit it, but again, it just bounces off. It doesn't really do much to it. It just kind of like plonk, reflects off of this invisible tentacle. And uh, now we move on to Laszlo's turn. Laszlo, what are you gonna do? Uh, Kifi, I have found that you have become much more proficient in your magic, and it's time for me to pull my weight. I would like you to summon me a pistol, a flintlock pistol. I am quite advanced in my shooting skills, and I want to help out. Could you do right. that for me? I'll let you give up your action to do, to let Keefy summon that for your use on your next turn, if you were if you're agreeable to that, Keefy. Yes, yes. I'm yes, sure. All right. You so you want to try and. A pistol. What could go wrong? Try and summon a, a pistol for Laszlo. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, exactly oh. what I'm gonna do. Okay, perfect. So you're gonna go ahead and roll me a d20 and a I'm minus four, please. Akio pistol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Avadika gunshots. Uh, at a minus what? Is there a minus? Four. Possibly a plus? Oh, a four. Okay. A minus four. Roll d20 and a minus four. Um. Uh, oh! Nice. Finally! I a gun. <laughs> well done. So you summon, you cast gun, and a gun appears. And you throw this pistol, and it's like a nice. I go, little... if these guns were real! <laughs> <laughs> you would be dead! You'd be fucking dead! <laughs> yes. So you manage to catch uh, cast gun, and you successfully summon a gun and toss it over to Laszlo. And uh, and Laszlo catches the gun and uh, and is kind of like, yeah, now I got a freaking sweet enchanted magic pistol in my hand, and it, it's like it's really impressive looking. And is there anything you want to do with it, Laszlo, aside from fire it before we move on to Kip's turn? Uh, no, I would like to fire it straight at its disgusting core. Okay, so on your turn, we'll be able to do that because you sacrificed your your action to allow Kifi the attempt to give you a pistol. Right. Right, right. All right. And now we're on to Kip's turn. Kip, I need you to roll me a d20 and a minus four to see if you can recover from getting a wind crushed out of you. <laughs> it's been fun, Kip. I don't want to talk <laughs> about it. Oh my god! Bye, guys. <laughs> what a, what a way right. to end a chapter. Kip being so, uh, fucking dead. <laughs> You're gonna uh hold on. Oh. Dude, I'm minus oh. Do some secret rolls. Cool. So you're gonna be so put off by this that you're actually going to uh take two points of damage on top of not being able to recover yourself. And uh and you you basically like you're like ugh, ugh, and it, and it's been crushed out of you so hard that you just kind of barf all over the uh, the tentacle. I've pooped. I've barfed all. <laughs> Who am I, Sipheus? Yeah, are you sure you have a stone <laughs> Uh So you throw up, and luckily you throw up all over this invisible tentacle, so you can kind of make out a little bit more of it Ooh. going up as it's covered in your barf. Okay. Um. So as that happens, it now moves on to the turn of the creature itself, and the creature notices more people kind of coming in. So you guys are going to hear uh, the sound of a thud and then rushing water, 
Uh, and it looks like a very large tent, invisible tentacle is going to try to sweep you all along. So I want literally everyone except for Kip to roll a d20 uh, unmodified. And I'm gonna do some private rolling here of my own. Uh, this, I, do we die in this last chapter? I'm kind of I mean, it's possible, I'm at 35 health. <laughs> All right, so luckily for the Wizards of the Coast, but unluckily for the rest of you, um, oh no, it won't go away. Please, I don't wanna roll any more dice, thank you. Uh, so unluckily for the rest of you, but luckily for the Wizards of the Coast, uh, Dimps kind of cheeses it into the walkway here, and they all kind of line up just along the edge because they hear that onrushing sound, and they're like, oh, God, fuck, and they kind of cheese it into the hallway. But the rest of you are unfortunately taken, uh, taken off guard by this, and every one of you is kind of swept along like a clock um, in the same direction, one by one, uh, until you kind of get sprawled out into the poop water here. Um, and then I want each of you to roll me a d20 with no modifiers, uh, who got swept along. So Prue, Keefe, and Laszlo, roll me a d20 with no modifiers, please. Ooh. Hello? Hello? Ooh. Oh my god! Ooh. Shut the front door! Ooh. I think the roll 20 is Shut fucking... the stone door. Yeah, this is bullshit. Lies. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, Keefe and Laszlo, you're both going to take uh, 10 points of damage. Uh, so that's that's going to happen. You're going to take 10 points of damage each. And Laszlo, unfortunately, you're going to get smashed face first into the poop water. And uh, you're knocked off balance. So on your turn, uh, you're going to have to do some recovery rolls before you can do anything. Uh, however, we are now on to Keefe. Keefe, you didn't get uh, knocked over, but you did take a big hit from that as you were splashed along. You recover and you're up, but you're damaged. What are you gonna do with your turn now? We're gonna we're gonna just try and shoot it in the face again. Really, that's the only thing that I see solving this scenario is just killing it. So we're gonna try fireball part two. Okay, you're gonna try it again. Yeah, we're gonna try it again. All right, cool. It's only going to be at a minus two this time. Okay, see, practice does make perfect, but yeah. normally I'd just throw a rope at it, but that's not really going to help, so... Uh, <laughs> no. Let's try. Minus two, you said? Minus two. Roll a d20 at a minus two. That won't look. Oh, just... Are you kidding me? So I'm going to say you you go ahead and you manage to cast a small fireball, but unfortunately it just kind of careens to the left and misses the monster in the center. And uh, nothing really happens other than it just kind of like, it doesn't really even care. It's still doing its thing. Uh, so now we move on to Azaman and Dimps and Osmo. They've all grouped together in the same kind of turn order here. And Azaman looks at, them all, at, at his fellows and he kind of goes like, ah, all right, we need to... Help! And the only way we've been able to help so far is by playing music. So, Dimps, uh, start strumming. Osmo, start shit. I mean, Dimps, start hitting the thing. Osmo, start strumming. I'm going to sing. And so they kind of confidently strut out. If it, if it was like a slow motion kind of like band uh, um, event, and together they can combine their turn, uh, all kind of like comboing their actions together to start playing the loudest, most sickest song they could possibly think of in order to get this thing kind of like off kilter. And so they, they kind of like line up and they start playing and they, and they start just jamming fucking hard on their instruments. And as they do so, the creature uh, kind of has a response to this and it, it sort of, it lets out another pained shriek. And you can tell that this is really fucking with it now. Now that you've got all three of these halflings together and they're belting out uh, together as one, um, this music, the thing kind of like, uh, it's, it, you know, it's like, God damn it, this really fucking hurts. It's like, it's like it's got a really bad headache, basically. And uh, it lets go of Kip. So Kip, can you go ahead and roll me a d20 at no modifiers, please? Oh, actually, you haven't recovered. More, minus four, please. Fuck. <laughs> Please be a good girl. Please be a good girl. Oh, submit. <laughs> Shut up. 
Oh it's my not, god. This is not real. This is not real life. <laughs> Is it your life? Is, oh, well, right. there I go. I falling to my rolls. death. Crushed. Rolls. Just crushed. It's cool. You only took four points of damage from the fall and two points of damage from the impact. Oh my uh, god. After. Six? So, you land face first uncomfortably, not recovered in a pile of poop water. It's fairly <sighs> shallow, so you're fairly much submerged in it. So you splash belly flop into this poop water and take six points of combined damage. I'm at and, 29. Uh, yep. <laughs> 29 <laughs> hit points remaining. Oh. Um, so, you you know, you splash down and you make an unfortunate impact in there. And now we're on to Prue's turn. You've recovered after being swept away. You, this monster, however, is now <laughs> full on in like, oh God, I'm really not enjoying my life mode. It's pretty distracted by the music. Is there any part of it that like, can I see movement in the water that would indicate to me that there's like tentacles around or something like that? Um, as it's panicking and thrashing about, you can uh, occasionally you see the impact of like a large tentacle, invisible tentacle smashing into the walls. So they're kind of like flailing everywhere. You don't, it's, it's panic flailing, right? It's in pain. Okay, I'm going to try and pinpoint one of those tentacles, kind of guess at where it's at, and I'm gonna try and jump onto one of those with the intent to eventually jump off of that and smack the actual structure in the center of the ceiling. All right, you know what? That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, it. It's gonna be hard, but um, be awesome. I'll give you... Mm, tell you what, I'll let you roll for something if you if you pass that roll, or sorry, it doesn't matter if you pass or fail. If you're willing to make a roll for something uh, that I won't tell anybody else, you can go ahead and get a really large modifier here if you want. Okay. Do you want to do that? I want to do it. Okay, roll me a d20. Privately? No, just uh, okay. it's, it's a public d20. Okay. Um, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to give me rolls for this, uh, and I'm going to give you a plus 10 to, to every roll. So go ahead and roll me uh, a d20 and uh, and add a plus 10 to the roll, and I'm going to have you roll a d20 with a plus 10, and then another d20 at a plus 10. Is that a total of three? So no, no, no. Uh, you rolled what you needed to roll. Okay. And it, it, went, it went off well. I'm going to roll response here just to see how that goes. Perfect. So you've done it. Uh, so in the process of uh, of doing this, you can kind of like manage to look at this, this uh, you, you pinpoint this invisible tentacle and you jump off it perfectly. It's like you knew it was there somehow. And then you rocket yourself with uh, just intense force off this tentacle and it, it's really weird that somebody like you would be able to do that um, at such like high velocity, but you do it. You jump on this tentacle. You you like like it was there. You knew it was there all along. You jump on it. You launch yourself into this thing. And are you overhanding or are you trying to drive the stick into it? I'm trying to just like like a baseball bat over my head, just clobber this thing. Like overhead, or are you side swinging, or uh, like? Based on the angle, I'm assuming I'm jumping at overhead. Okay, cool. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna impact on that thing, and uh, I want you to roll me one more d20 at a at a plus eight here. Nice, well done. I'm gonna roll a response roll here. Woo. All right, so you impact this thing, and it is currently panicking um, real hard from having all this musical assault onto its senses. It can't stand the harmonies. Um, you impact this creature that's in the rock, and uh, you, you, you impact it so hard that half of the, the body that seems to be kind of like encased in, uh, in the refuse, like on the roof, comes loose. And so like a leg and an arm for this like eight foot tall, like automaton kind of looking thing is just free dangling. And the other half of it is encased in its protective like layer there. And it uh, it kind of like is like 
it's really thrown off by this, and you land, like, pretty gracefully on the other side of the room and skid through the poop water, and uh, you've kind of knocked it free. So it looks like it, uh, another good solid blow from something might kind of knock this thing out of its little protective shell on the roof. So Laszlo, uh, I need you to roll uh, to see if you can recover. So it's a minus one on a, on a d20. Roll that for me and see if you can recover from getting poop slapped, more or less. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you the recovery. So you, you collect your shit and you kind of get back up and uh, now you've got a, a magic pistol and you're covered in poop water. Everyone's pretty much covered in poop water at this point. What are you gonna do, Laszlo? I feel like this is my shot. I'm going to take my flint and tinder and I'm going to load it into the gun first to have some kind of explosive shot and I'm going to shoot it at what looks to be a weak spot on its body. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, cool. You don't actually have any ammo um, that, like, you know of for it. You were just given a magic pistol. Oh, You're just gonna, uh, you can fire it and see what happens. I mean, you didn't really take the time to look at it or inspect it or anything. So you're just gonna point at it and shoot and hope it goes well. So I, I actually need a a metal ball. Damn it! No, you don't need ammo. Uh, potentially, it's a magic gun. Point, why don't you point at it and shoot, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, all right, that sounds very risky. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, though, because uh, I'm going to give you a plus four on a d20. These rolls, man. Oh, all right. Ooh. So uh, you, uh, you point the gun at it, and you pull the trigger to fire and um, the gun fires, but it's not what you were expecting. It fires like a large lump of like uh, pink paint. So it just goes like, then it kind of shudders in your hand and it goes boom, and then it just fires up and splatters the whole like roof with like a big blob of pink, pink paint. So, uh, uh, you know, plink paint. So a, a, a magical weapon given to you by Kifi does what one would think a magical weapon given to you by Keefe would do when you roll poorly. I and now rolled so good with that weapon. <laughs> to conjure that shit, I rolled real good. So now we move, you look at the pistol like, the fuck? And now we move on to Kip, who is uh, now recovering in the poop water, kind of like, <laughs> so go ahead and roll a d20 at a minus two for me to see. I don't wanna. Get your shit together. <laughs> you, you don't feel like you don't feel like joining it today. You lie in the poop water and, and like you kind of like defeatedly gurgle and bubbles come up through the nasty water. Do I lose health? Of... No, it's just really sad. And <laughs> just as bad. <laughs> It's really sad and pathetic. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be alive. All right, so the central core of this creature has been knocked uh, half loose from its, like, construct that it's part of. Um, it's on its turn now, so it's gonna go I'm going to go ahead and change up the way it directs its stuff here. I'm going to roll some private rolls here real quick to determine what we get in terms of how this affects people. Uh, all right. No, go back to stab it. Stab. Cool. Um, so, uh, Keefe and Laszlo, can you guys both go ahead and roll a d20 for me at a uh, minus two? All right. And then I'm going to roll uh, two rolls here. My one good roll. I need a gun, and hopefully I didn't get hit. <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay, cool. So, Kifi, um, the incoming tentacle doesn't hit you, thankfully, because unfortunately it's landed right on top of Laszlo. Oh. And Oof. Laszlo uh, isn't uh, quick enough to kind of get out of the way of that. So... Mm -hmm. 
All right, Lazlo, you're going to take eight points of damage from getting smashed in the face with a, uh, a giant invisible tentacle. And then you're going to go ahead and roll me a d20 and a minus one to see if that knocks you on your ass. Sorry, at a minus what? At a minus, uh, uh, a minus uh, two. Uh, roll a d20 and a minus two. Dylan, if you could check chat really quick. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and do that, Dara. Okay, thanks. Uh, and unfortunately, the impact knocks you right off on your ass into the poop water again, so you're going to have to roll a recovery again on your next turn. So you get basically bonked on the head by a big invisible tentacle, and it sends you sprawling into the water again. Uh, Kifi, it is your turn now. A third time's the charm. You're going to try to fireball the hanging like figure in the center? We're going to we're going to try. All right, perfect. So what I want you to do is roll me a d20 with no modifiers. Ooh. Really? Hello? So you're going to you're going to up and try to fireball the ceiling and uh and unfortunately, you know, you do it again, but this time it's just another uh, you 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 do you do a little callback to episode one, and you just shoot a big meatball into the sky, and it kind of like splat, and then sort of like sits there on the ceiling. So this now a, well. a big meatball is now uh, impacted into the roof. I think we're changing the strat, friends. <laughs> All right, and now as as the man dims and Osmo uh, kind of continue their their turn, they're gonna try to crank it up a notch and just get real aggressive with that music. So they're gonna belt out even more music together. They're gonna summon all their their efforts together and they're gonna just keep focusing on keeping the music going and keeping the tunes of rock in. And Fru, it is now your turn. What are you gonna do now that you've kind of landed? Oh, sorry, we should put you over here because that was the journey that it carried you through. So now yeah, you're over there. That. Sorry about that. So um, I'm gonna, after having seen what transpired in the last little bit here, I'm gonna take a second and shout across to Lazlo. I'm just gonna tell him, hey, Hey, if you could shoot some of these tentacles, I can see them. That would be awesome. And then I'm going to try and see if I can recreate what I did last time. I'm going to try and bounce off one of those tentacles and take another whack at this thing. OK, cool. And are, are you going to try to do that with the same role I instructed you to do before or take it without the modifiers? OK. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll try it with the modifiers. OK, so go ahead and roll me another d20 with no modifiers. Okay, cool. Um, you know, everyone kind of notices you do this again, but uh, go ahead and have another plus 10 um, to to both uh, rolls. There you go. Yeah, you're perfectly fine. So uh, everybody kind of like, they, they see you do this, but they're kind of like, okay, whatever. She's just really athletic and super bouncy. Uh, so you just jump off another tentacle and launch yourself into the air overhand with this, uh, this big stick. And uh, you deliver that thing right into it as it's hanging there. And uh, I'm gonna roll a response and see if that was enough. Oh boy, howdy, was it ever. I rolled a critical failure. <laughs> That's the rolls I know and love. <laughs> How does so, it feel? Uh, <laughs> I was like, That voice yeah. is the Steven voice. I but... Take that, players. <laughs> How does it feel, Steven? How does that fail? How do you like rolling critical <laughs> failures, Steven? <laughs> All right. So uh, you go ahead and smack this dangling uh, monster from the uh, the refuse. And it uh, it kind of, uh, you hear a, a, a shifting of, of rock. And uh, as you impact with this thing, it gets knocked free. And it, uh, it kind of like falls to the ground out of the, the pile of stuff there. And it, it lands into the, into the water and kind of Let's out another low screech at you all. And uh, it's, it kind of brings itself up. And now, instead of this thing in the ceiling, uh, all you really have to worry about is, uh, whoop. Oh, actually, let's make it just a little bit larger there. Cause it is like eight feet tall. So, whoop, there we go. So now there's only an eight foot tall automaton made of intricate stone standing in the center there. Um, you can see uh, its green eyes are glowing uh, brightly, and it looks almost like a little bit of like uh, witch flame is kind of coming out of them. 
and little shots of like green kind of like flare up through its arms and through its legs as you can see and uh it kind of like comes off in little wisps from it but this thing is just standing there and it looks pretty pissed off but now you have like a vaguely humanoid form to start beating the shit out of so maybe it'll go a little better this time so that was uh that was your initiative there and your actions lazo it is your turn uh what are you gonna do uh, oh wait sorry you need to roll a dice uh, to see if you recover. So let's do a minus two uh, d20 for me, please. Are you <laughs> serious? I think we die here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you try to recover from getting head splatted by a, a tentacle. And uh, you're not doing so well about that. So you just kind of get up to be like, I'm, and then you sit down for a bit. Cause you're like, nope. Uh, <laughs> so you're, you're gonna have to roll again. And uh, unfortunately it's gonna be harder next time. Cause you're uh, a little bit stunned. So uh, however, Kip, go ahead and give me an unmodified D20 to get back up and see if you can rejoin the fight after being thrown around and dumped in poop water. Yeah, there you go. I'll give you that recovery action for go. free because you rolled so high on it. So go ahead and do what you want to do. You're holding your dog bow. You're covered in poop water. Life is hard. What's your response to this thing standing in the center? Uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna just sh try to shoot my bow at it again, the center of it. Uh, okay, cool. Also, just a, a heads up to anybody who've been sending me messages uh, wondering about the health of people. This takes place immediately following episode three. So everyone's damage that they took during that event would have retained. I was so, wondering uh, about that. Nobody really had any time to recover in between that moment. It Did was I kind of like you know, get, get under there and finish this fucker off kind of situation. Do we all start at 50 at the beginning? Did I never, have I never yes. taken damage until the, today? <laughs> You've never taken Holy damage. Holy shit. shit. I was like, oh, I thought maybe I fucked up or something and needed to have less. Whoa. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then I got effed in the A today. Okay. Yes, you yes. did. So I am going to shoot my bow at it. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and roll me a d20 and uh, the plus two. Okay. Cause yeah, she is. I already have my bow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You okay. don't have to worry about summoning it. She's being a good dog. Okay. Please be as good as my last row, please. Oh, why didn't it go? Hello. Try that again. Nope, that was a damage roll. You got to oh, roll. Oh, I'm D dumb. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a combat roll, so I, I'm gonna roll a, a modifier here for the creature. It had just fallen and recovered from itself, so it's still gonna defend. So you're gonna miss. You're gonna shoot, you're what gonna a miss. a fucking surprise. You're, it's gonna go wide because you're still recovering from a mouthful of poop water. You're like, yeah, and you're like, as you shoot, because you realize it's, everything tastes really bad, and the it's, shot's gonna go wide. And the creature, uh, now having beef with Prue, because uh, you were the one who kind of knocked it free um, from the ceiling, is gonna come charging over towards Prue and uh, it's gonna try and this thing is not like the rock monsters that was being summoned before. It's not slow, it's, it's, uh, it's not stupid, and it's still bigger and scarier than the rock monsters that have been coming before you. So it's gonna just shoulder charge Prue to try and pin her against the wall in hopes of crushing her. So Prue, can you go ahead and roll me a d20? And uh, you're gonna go ahead and uh, do a plus four. All right, and then I'm gonna roll a die roll. Oh, you are very lucky. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this thing comes charging at you and tries to barrel into you, um, and it kind of it slips up a bit in the poop water as it's charging towards you because it's not used to using its its rocky legs. Uh, so it's gonna slip a bit and stumble, and it's just gonna stop right in your face and very angrily be staring like nose to nose with you. So, uh, Keefy, it's your turn. 
Elsa, you have a cat now. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, now that he's, like, more of a figure, if I cast it, do I have no, uh, minuses? You'll have a bonus, because you've been trying- if you want to keep doing fireball, yeah, then I'm gonna I'll give you a plus cast two. Fireball. I gotta hit him at least once before I can give up on this dream. All right, you're gonna fireball the monster standing right next to Prue. Sounds good to me. Go ahead and roll me a plus two on a d20. Hello? Hello? Oh my god. <laughs> I should change the combat music to the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> uh, okay, I uh, guess so. Prue, can you go ahead and roll me a d20 and a plus oh, two? No, I'm sorry, Prue. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh dear. Okay, um, uh, Prue, can you just you can do me a big favor? Yep. And uh, sit there for a second while I roll some numbers here. Yeah, just uh, uh, yeah. I'm cool. sorry, Prue. I'm sorry. Cool, 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 cool. I didn't need cool. eyebrows. Eyebrows are overrated. Yeah, yeah. Can you go ahead and take 15 points of damage for me, please? Oof. And uh, and yeah, so you're gonna get hit face face first with a fireball from uh, from Keefy. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go off, but it's gonna hit you instead. So you're oh. gonna get staggered back a little bit. So you're the good news, you're not face to face with the monster because you're currently on fire. Um But you know that that, that goes up pretty quickly because you quickly do a, a little bit of a poop splashy, oh god, why fire hurts bad situation. And uh, and as uh, as that Sorry. as that passes along the uh, the wizards of the coast with two Zeds and wizard in case you guys were wondering just so it doesn't share any oh, names with anything else. Oh, good to know. Wizard. Yeah, wizards. I think it's like of the coast. wizards of the coast. W i z z a r d s. Yes. Ooh. So they're gonna march together playing this music and they're gonna try to move on this thing and they're gonna play a song and Azaman is gonna lead them in a song and he's he's gonna be like, "Hey, big monster, who's fucking my friends?" We're here to play the song of your end. And they're going to kind of move up and try to, like, in, you know, fuck with this thing. So they're going to get right up in there with that acoustic assault, and it's going to it's gonna be really displeased with that. It's going to be so displeased with it, in fact, that it's going to clutch its head and let out another ringing screech through the room. <laughs> and uh, as it does so, Prue, you now recover from being hit with a fireball. It's It's freaking out because there's all this music. There's a bunch of annoying halflings playing music behind it, and it's really pissed off at the fact that it, this is happening. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna do something? Uh, with thing? Yeah, it is within like smashing directly in the face range. I'm gonna smash it yep. directly in the face. Are you, you're gonna overhand your stick into this thing's Just face? Just like sideways this time, like shoulder you're, to. You're gonna, like, to you're gonna batter up that bitch. Yes. Okay. Is there a point on it you're aiming? Uh, I'm sh called shot to the jaw. Okay, you're gonna go for the face. I'm gonna try. Okay, cool. Um, do you want to take another roll? This time, no. This time, okay. I'm, I'm just gonna straight up. Okay, cool. Uh, so give me a, roll me a d20 and a plus three. Oof. Thank God. Yeah, good thing you didn't take that roll, eh? Fuck. So okay, I rolled a two. You're fine. Yes! The Dylan rolls are back. They're back. We might make we might make it out alive. And Matt dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, you impact with its head. It's not gonna be a really massive blow, but it's gonna knock this thing off kilter. It's gonna kind of take a knee, and you can tell you inflicted some kind of damage on it. Uh, it's already been really uh, put off, put off balance by all this annoying, uh, fucking halfling singing and strumming behind it. And uh, you kind of go ahead and give it the old slash on the face, and it, it kind of not goes down to one knee and is clutching its head in pain. Uh, Laszlo, I need you to roll a recovery at a plus, uh, at a minus four. Sorry, roll me a d20. It's good enough. You give up. So what are you gonna do? 
I'm going to assume that this is a operating flintlock pistol, but I have no ammo. So I'm going to improvise because that's, I'm an expert in improvisation. And also, I would like to spend one of my, my one behavior point for whatever that gets me, an extra turn or extra modifier or whatever. And I'm going to load the 20 gold that I have into the end of this flintlock pistol. And I'm gonna fire this gold in this dumbass rock's face. And I'm going to hope it just shoots its head off. All right, you're gonna fucking, uh, you know what? You're gonna run up to this motherfucker. You're gonna spend your behavior point to give yourself some fantastic bonuses here. You're not gonna uh, do a roll change, but you're gonna you're gonna implore that the DM gives you some bonuses to this event. So you're gonna load all your fucking money into this pistol. You're gonna run up and you're gonna try, this thing's holding its head. It looks up at your pistol. You're gonna point this pistol in its face and you're gonna roll me a d20 at a plus six. And we're gonna see what happens as a result. Fantastic. It's in your ugly face. So we're gonna roll Go a back, quick, though. we're gonna roll a quick defense here. And I'm gonna see if he. You wanna guess what I rolled? A one. A one? Yep. <laughs> Die, bitch! This fucking rock monster on its knees rolls a one in response to you charging this pile, this fucking gun with this golden gun. So Laszlo runs up, he fucking execution pistols this thing in the face. Laszlo, as is your right as a man who is about to fire a gun into someone's face execution style, do you have any words that you want to deliver before the trigger is pulled? May you crumble and die. <laughs> All right, so you go ahead and give your fantastic I... one-liner. You pull that trigger, and, uh, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to blow that thing's head clean the fuck off. Because... You loaded a whole bunch of alchemical ingredients that I never thought you would have thought of into an enchanted gun that I was literally going to call the Alchemist's Revenge and give it to you permanently. You, you psychically linked to me, sir. So you did the one thing this gun is really good at, and that's shooting money. And you fucking blew this thing's head straight <laughs> off. <laughs> Boom, so congratulations! Headshot. Boom, headshot. Uh, you Bro, you deliver uh, a blow to this thing's face. It goes, you know. There's a, a confetti of fucking like the sound of, of ricocheting coins, and it sounds like somebody like won a fucking slot machine because it, not only does it blow the thing's head off, but it's like you killed something in Super Mario Brothers, and more coins than you put into the fucking thing come blowing out of the back of its head. So this poop water is now scattered with roughly 200 gold coins. And uh, it, it pitches back into the water. And the form of it is just kind of like lying there a bit. Uh, and then as you kind of look down at it, it starts to kind of, the torso starts to kind of get up again, but it's not doing so well. It's not quite down yet. But now we move on to Kip's turn. Kip, is there anything you want to do here? I still need to try to fucking get up, right? No, you got up. You I did? You missed your shot. You got up, but you missed your shot. Oh, shot. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, God, it's, you know, so many times that I just have lost count. Um, are those guys in my way to, like, shoot at it? The they wizards? Are, but they're halflings, so they're not so really. So they're, like, short. Okay. Even though I'm kind yeah, of short. Could, I could give you free movement to move around and kind of, like, there and deliver a, a shot to this thing okay. as it's sort of yeah, yeah, I'd like to try to shoot it. <laughs> Maybe actually right. hit it this time for the All first right. time. <laughs> I want you to roll me a d20 unmodified, but the, the thing we're going to say here is this thing is so hard up to not be hit, and you're in such a good position that as long as you don't critically fail this roll, <laughs> you're going to impact it with your shot. Well, we'll see. Unmodified, you said? Unmodified d20. Oh, God. All right, everybody ready? Oh! Not 20. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh shit! Woo! 
Ooh, finally! You were uh, too. I swear <laughs> folks are not scripted. What's the thing? Oh my god. Is this the one? Damn it. Woo! Fuck. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dara, so uh, you are also a, the one delivering an executing shot here to the core of this thing's body with an enchanted arrow from your magic dog. Is there anything you want to say when you deliver this natural critical 20 into this thing? Um, I'll be back! What? <laughs> Flink! <laughs> I don't want to come back to <laughs> I don't know what that means, I'll be but back. I it. <laughs> <laughs> and you let loose the shot, and your dog, who is really fucking tired of being in the toilet, <laughs> essentially gives a big boost to your shot in the hopes that this will make things stop being all about being in poop zone. <laughs> and you let go of this uh, this arrow and in the short time that it travels to this creature's body it illuminates the room with blinding light as it travels into this thing's chest impacts in this thing's chest and ruptures it into tiny pieces across the whole room scattering you all in little pieces of stone and masonry ooh, ow, ooh, and you uh, you're pretty sure that you killed the fucking thing now that it's rock confetti ow ooh, ow kind of hurts is it dead, guys? Ugh. I think it's dead, right? Yeah. Yes. Oof. I think I think what? you managed to do it. That was a very impressive shot you took there. The rocks won't stop falling. Ow. Ooh. <laughs> it hurts. Maybe maybe your dog could turn into like a like a, a um a hat. umbrella. Yeah, nice dream. <laughs> <laughs> she is no over with everything today. right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's like give her a toy and she can just chill for a little. Yeah, time. that's a good idea. Oh, weird good guys! Job, she turned pink. What? Um. Look at her. <laughs> wow, your dog, your dog turned pink. <laughs> oh, maybe from the yarn, the purple. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh the my yarn. god, you know I'm not too worried about it. You look pretty. It it works well on you, Pip. Oh, pink beard. Good job. Good job. You did a good job. Good job, everybody. <laughs> There's her toy squeaking. Yep. Um, I'm going to mute. All right, cool. So <laughs> we have uh, we have now well done, everyone. You've you've literally murdered this rock monster thing. And uh, and as you kind of all sort of gather your senses, you're all sort of celebrating and the, the music stops like like the the guy there was like you shoot that arrow the thing explodes and then they just finish like a sick rift on a song and everyone sits there quietly for like two seconds and then the the halflings just start freaking out they're like yes yes <laughs> they're like high-fiving they're like like yeah they're running up to you guys and high-fiving everyone's Woo! just like, happy and we into did it. it we almost fucking die good job everybody Woo. Uh, so that that happens and then uh as you guys kind of like are, are collecting yourselves you uh you start to hear the sound of uh of the masonry above you slowly sort of it's like is it raining in here and then you realize like small pieces of rock are falling off of the roof is there anything you guys want to do in, in response to that maybe Probably move. Run? I'm gonna look really yeah. mad. You're gonna look real mad. Very mad. Pretty, I'm gonna suggest you that we move out of the way and get going back because I think we think we may have solved the problem, friends. Hopefully, yeah. Let's get out of here. All right. So uh, you guys are all going to collectively book ass back to the way you came in. Yes. Yeah, yes. unless, unless Prue's sitting there looking angry still. No, I, I can walk and be angry at the same time. <laughs> what a talent. Mm -hmm. walk, walk and anger. Okay, sweet. I'm, uh, I'm just going to, before we start walking, I'm going to give uh, Laszlo a little, like, hug her on his leg and say, you did good, man. You did good. <laughs> thank, thank you, kind gnome. I, I very much appreciate it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, 
go over to Kiff and I'm gonna reach out to try and to touch uh, Pip. Go. You, you did so good. Can I, can I hold Pip? <laughs> yes, you may. You may, Kiffy. You did an amazing job too. Here you go. <laughs> Look at her. You turned her pink. She's so well, cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys, uh, you guys kind of haul ass as you hear the remainder of the masonry that was forming a clog and what sounds to be a lot of clogs in places inside the inner city falling apart uh, simultaneously. Um, you get the sense that you you basically unclogged the toilet that was Edder's inability to move. Uh, so congratulations, plumbers. Uh, you guys are now uh, going to head back to the elevator and meet up with everybody else. So as you guys kind of like move your way through the uh, the underground, you can hear the uh, the sound of of the so snowstorm outside. Uh, even as you're like around this elevator, more or less, um, and we'll also just go back to the, the city map okay. now because you guys are done with the toilet. There we go. So as you guys are kind of crowded around. Uh, this elevator and everyone's kind of like coming back that you that you summoned uh, or that, that it, it split up and separated. Uh, everyone is just kind of like, oh my god, they did it. Like you guys, you guys did it. They're like super, super amped for you dudes. And uh, and as you're kind of like all kind of gathered together and, and, and like standing there triumphantly, Siphius kind of like comes down with the elevator again and he just kind of like walks up and uh, and he he grabs Kip by the so shoulders and kind of shakes her and is like, "Are you sure you killed it? Is it dead?" I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's it was blown to smithereens and rain like rocks rain down on us. Uh, I I'm pretty sure, guys. Right? It's dead. Right? It's dead. I shot it on the goddamn face with gold. Can you believe it? <laughs> We're pretty sure it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, Let's uh, hope. Uh, yeah, you guys basically kind of like are, are all like 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 say yes, we killed it. We there's it's it's kind of buried under a bunch of rock and in the sewers, but it's uh, maybe we should have picked up one of the rocks. No, I I think leaving them right where they were <sighs> was the right move. Okay. Um, as as you kind of, guys are kind of looking around, you can see that um, on uh, who has like a backpack or something. Mm, I've got a, a side pouch. pouch. Oh right, uh, Nixus, you've got like a or wait, sir, what did you say? Did you uh, a sad pouch. Something. I heard a, a sad fat pouch. No, I heard a fat pack, and I was. Who has a fat pouch. pack? <laughs> yeah, I was Just like, what your... the. Open your bag with lotion and Kleenexes to take out a rock. And um, <laughs> all right, so uh, Prue, you kind of like uh, you feel like there's a lump in like one of your bags, and you kind of reach in, and you're like, you realize that this is like a piece of the the the, the monster that you actually like killed, like the piece that um, from the thing, not from the refuse above, but like an actual piece of the thing that you killed, and it looks kind of like a broken part of its face. Uh, kind of ended up in your bag somehow. So you're Amazing. Gonna I'm going to walk very now. quickly up to Siphius and just touch him with it. <laughs> yeah, so it, oh, that's yeah. what you're going to do. Uh-huh. You're going to, so you're going to come charging over to Siphius and you you basically like, you're like, oh boy, I know what happens next. And he sees you coming and he like, if it was a slow motion moment, he would be like, like going to move away but you're already too close and you kind of push it to his chest and there's a moment where everyone kind of sits waiting for something to happen and he looks down and he goes oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> and then he looks at you and he goes why did you do that I was really hoping you'd vomit and Sophia's kind of looks at you and then he goes well, well, I didn't. Good. Here, take this. And I hand him the rock. And he, like, grabs it angrily, and he's like, good, I guess this means it's dead. Mm-hmm. Good enough proof. Oh, and then he, like, angrily stomps back onto the elevator. 
and you guys all kind of like follow him. So everyone who came underground, and uh, as you guys kind of are looking around, you're like wondering like where everybody else, uh, like some people haven't really quite made it yet. Um, and uh, as you guys are kind of like uh, doing that, I'm going to put up our next poll just before we kind of wrap up the adventure here. So those of you watching at home, sorry, it was a bit more of a boss fight kind of situation. And I didn't have a lot of things for you to vote on. Uh, uh, so I'm going to quickly put up a poll. You only have a very short amount of time for you guys to kind of like vote. Um, but more or less, uh, <laughs> sorry, I read, I read discord chat. <laughs> um, we need to quickly do a poll here. Sorry to hold things up, everybody. I just, uh, it's not loading correctly. Um, there we go. Perfect. So we have a poll up now. If you guys can go ahead and, and toss your votes into it, um, this will be for um, one last thing to happen. So as you guys are kind of like getting on the elevator, you notice that like a couple of people aren't there. You notice that the uh, Cod Car and Dolan and um, and the, the like demonic priestess and a couple of other like workers and stuff, they're not there. And um, a lot of the the choir and the, the like singing like bird uh, kind of like priestess thing stayed on the surface to kind of like keep the uh, the monsters from kind of re rejoining and recollecting themselves. And uh, Dara, if you can just switch the overlay back over to the little chapter display, also, pretty please. Because now we're we're done with rolls. Um, and sorry, just just to, to double check, Saji, did you did you need to to run off now? What's happening? Uh, yeah. Is that if that's okay? Yeah, no, that's totally okay. I just wanted to make sure if you needed me to like work that in with everything right now. That'd be wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> no vote is coming up apparently. No uh, vote I, is coming up. Oh. TJ was saying no vote coming up, but... Oh, weird. Yeah, just refresh the stream. It might take a second. Yeah, refresh Otherwise, the stream, guys. Uh, there's a Twitch Picks button at the bottom. You might need to make it visible again, because sometimes it literally just doesn't make itself visible. Um, but there we go. It's 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 showing for me. Um, cool. So, Saji, uh, thank you very much preemptively for joining us for this one here. We love you very much. Of course. Love and, you. Uh, We'll definitely okay. update you on how it all goes. Yes, please do. For the last few minutes here. Yes, please. Okay. Enjoy your party. Okay. okay. Bye, Bibi. Bye, Sandy. So as you guys are uh, basically like together um, on this elevator, you notice that a, p a couple of people really aren't uh, aren't coming uh, coming yet. You you have you don't see them. And as you guys are kind of like walking or uh, pondering that, um, Kifi uh, just kind of like has one of her random narcolepsy fits and falls over face first onto the elevator. And it's just kind of like lying there. So um, oh. you, you, is anyone going to do anything about that? Uh, I'll, I'll scoop down and I'll pick her up into my arm like a, a wee sleepy babby. All right. So Prue is, Prue is going to carry, carry Kifi for the remainder of our little adventure here. Uh, meantime, you guys are getting on the elevator, and you notice that these these few people haven't kind of like caught up yet. Um, but Siphius is is preparing to send the elevator up. Is there anything you want to kind of say in regards to that? Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna put my rocky talkie to my throat. Um, Do Dolan, so we're we're going up in the elevator. You coming? Um, so you you kind of you're you're talking to try and get a hold of like Dolan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if they're not there. Um, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Ignore it. There's a uh, there's a, a burst of like what sounds like static, and you can kind of hear like the sound that sounds like his noise or his voice coming through. Um, but unfortunately, it's too uh, the the magic storm above you is now upon you guys fully, and now you realize that these things aren't going to work very well like at a remote distance anymore because there's just a lot of like magical interference going on in the sky now. So you hear a, a broken up kind of like 
like uh, like a huh, huh, and that's really about all you can make out. I'm gonna turn to Siphius. Hey, did were you able to get in touch with everybody to tell them we were going up? Like, they know that we're leaving. Sorry, could I, Derek, can you like make a button for that to come up every <laughs> yeah. time? Yeah, yeah. He, like has a bad <laughs> narcolepsy in the future, please. Yes, I will keep it on here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, what did you say, Prue? Oh, I was just I was checking with um Scipius to see if he had actually let everybody know that we're leaving just to make sure that they're on their way. And Scipius kind of like uh, the scatterbrain like turns around to you, still a scowl in his eyes because you tried to make him barf rock. And uh he's like, uh, what is everyone not here? Are we missing people? Yeah, there's there's at least one group that hasn't shown up yet. It's got a couple of our friends in it. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, oh, damn it. Um, mm, God. Uh, and as you're kind of like sitting there, um, the the result of our vote is now going to be resolved. It, it was a little bit of a short voting period. Sorry to those of you who might have just missed the vote. Like, what? There was a vote? Uh you can, you can have, like, a last second here to cast your vote, and then I'm going to refresh it, and we'll see the results. Cast your vote! Refresh the page! Yeah, if you don't see a vote! Page, vote on the vote on the screen, and uh, I will uh, Remember, now Remember, there's a little bit it. of a delay. Yes, there is a bit of a delay, so I'll give everyone, like, a little bit of time for the delay there. See what they do. This is the delay song. We are waiting. Come on, put your votes now. Everybody, come on, vote for the results, and then see what happens to the dwarf and the cow. All right, cool. So that's enough time. I'm going to refresh it, and it looks like we have an 82% for one option. Uh, you guys are, so I'm just going to say in response, you guys are very kind. So, um, as you can hear the 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 uh, the whirling snow above you and Siphius getting impatient, trying to get you guys into the center spire, um, you hear running footsteps basically from down the hall, and keening around the corner is uh, Dolan, you know his uh, his beard flapping in the breeze, uh, somehow still not betraying the, what lies beneath with his lack of pants, despite flopping around quite a bit. And um, he comes skidding up and he goes, oh, hold the lift, please. And uh, just behind him, um, somehow th this dwarf ran faster than the, uh, the priestess and the, the seven some odd foot tall minotaur. But they're quick on his heels and they kind of like out of breath or are behind Dolan and, the, and they kind of like skid onto the elevator too. And, uh, and there we go. Now, now the results of your vote have been have determined what happened there and everyone's on the elevator. Does anyone have anything left to do before Siphius sends it upwards? Uh, no, I just want to get the heck out of here. Mm-hmm. Actually... Never mind. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So the elevator is still covered in yarn and, uh, and uh, Prue just kind of sits there <laughs> holding holding uh, Keefe as you guys kind of go up and uh, some people kind of like, they're like, woof, and they take a rest in the big piles of yarn. And uh, and as the uh, the elevator reaches the top back into the central spire, uh, we can hear the snowstorm raging outside. And uh, as the door opens to allow you guys from the elevator to the central area, you can just hear the horrific whirling snows around you now as they kind of start blotting out visibility. You can, it's only a little far ahead of you to get to the door for the main central spire, but you can't even fucking see it. The snow is so bad and the storm is so bad. And immediately as you're walking out into this bleak, horrible snowstorm, you can feel it tearing your skin. Anybody not wearing clothing covering parts of their body can feel it being cleansed off by tiny micro particles. And you guys push through this wind and storm and make your way towards the door 
and Siphius kind of like stumbles through the snow and he isn't doing too hot trying to do it, but he's getting there and he eventually manages to slam his hand onto the other door and they open the front door into the central spire and everyone kind of like piles in. And, uh, and oddly enough, Dolan doesn't seem to be all that phased by the weather, even though he's completely naked. Um, he seems to kind of enjoy it a little bit, uh, almost. And uh, But everyone else is definitely very miserable. They're not really enjoying it. And so they kind of all pile in, and uh, and eventually Siphius turns around and puts his hand on it, and then the door closes again, and you can kind of hear the reduced snowstorm outside as you are all now safe inside this building. And uh, and now everybody is just kind of like breathing a sigh of relief. They're like, oh my God, we made it. Nobody died, hopefully. We're good. So you guys are, are good inside this hallway. Is there anything you want to say or do before Siphius takes you into the central spire? Just take a glance around. I know there was poor visibility. Did everybody make it in? Mm, that's a good. That's a good idea. Can anyone um, who's listening hear our stones now? Um, you can, uh, you get some staticky responses, so nobody can really communicate using these things remotely anymore at this current juncture. And uh, in the the walkway to the elevator there, it's very quiet. Everything is, is very, very quiet. And uh, that's about it. But uh, as you look around, you uh, you notice that nobody who was on the elevator is missing. Um, it looks like everybody made it through the snow, so you're all you're all good there. But that's good on you for checking. Um, so you're good. You guys are good. Um, anything else before we move along? Gonna turn to uh, Siphius. Just give him the up and down real quick. So is the city moving now then? The up and down. Oh, like with your eyes? Yay. I thought, never mind. I don't want to say what I no, thought. No, uh, no, I didn't give him one of those. No, <laughs> just with the eyes. Ooh. Just gave him a quick up and down and then uh, asked him to get us on the way. <laughs> the old one, too, you know. And uh, right after dark. <laughs> Siphius kind of like frantically nods and he says, we, we should hurry. We, we need to get to the control room and let... Uh, uh, they can't hear us over the, the communicators anymore, so we need to get to the control room ASAP and, and tell Delanum that uh, everything can hopefully start going again. And uh, so you guys kind of charge forwards and everyone runs through the, the door, the hallway of open doors and jumps on the platform and you rise up into the central spire and... It, Sorry, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was just gonna say, is uh, Devotion here with us? Yeah, she's a, she's in this group that's all heading towards the uh, the upwards elevator. Okay, because I'm gonna just shimmy on over to her really quick, and I'm <laughs> gonna give her the up and down, <laughs> and I'm just gonna be like, "Hey, girl, are you doing okay? How you doing?" <laughs> um, devotion is is going to like so as you guys are all standing on this elevator that heads up to the central spire. Uh, the demonic priestess, or the demon kin, sorry, she's not a demon, she's a demon kin, um, uh, who is, has gray skin, is very, like, ethereally kind of beautiful, about six foot tall or so. Um, she's got clear crystal horns and white body hair, so white eyebrows, white hair, and, like, silvery white eyes, and is wearing, like, very ornate looking kind of robes. For those of you who don't know who did devotion. Yeah, is. keep describing her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and uh, and and yeah, you uh, you you come up uh, come up to her and you kind of like hit on her a little bit and you know at first she's kind of like you know like she's she's her normal warm and receptive self and then she kind of gets a whiff of you and uh, and is kind <gasps> of like, lightly kind of gags. A little bit. Oh, I forgot I'm poopy in my pant pant and all over me. Oh, no. you, you spent a lot of time interacting with poop. And I vomited. Luckily, oh. Luckily, a lot of it did get kind of condensed and frozen to you in a fashion when you were going through that brief period between uh. the elevator and the central spire. It's still kind of pretty. The smell's pretty noticeable, though, unfortunately. I take 29 hit points to the heart. 
heart i'm dead <laughs> it's okay she's a very understanding lady um so she kind of goes ahead and and uh and giggles a little bit as you come up after her initial like, uh, response and uh she lets you know that yeah yeah she's she's doing okay and more importantly how are you um, I'm okay. Just obviously really gross, but, you know, saving the world and everything. Feels good. It feels good. Uh, I'm gonna start to just slowly... I'm very self-aware now of how bad I smell, so I'm just gonna slowly start backing away. Um, as I'll you come, start I'll be back. Slowly, slowly backing away from you, she kind of picks up on this, this movement, and uh, before you can kind of step backwards, she puts both hands on your shoulders and touches her forehead to yours and uh, kind of like says some really harsh sounding but really pleasant note words under her mouth or under her voice uh, whispering to herself and kind of like you can kind of feel a layer um, of of your like your body is kind of like cleansed almost like it, it's painful a bit it feels like somebody literally just kind of gently scraped the top layer of your skin off your body in one second oh but um, <laughs> but after the fact, you're you're clean. Everything looks nice and clean. You're still a little damp and frozen, but for the most part, the fecal matter is gone and you don't smell bad at all. And she kind of like looks into your eyes and gives you a little kiss on the cheek and then goes back over to the elevator. Thank you is all I could muster <laughs> as she walk as she's far too far gone to even hear it. I let out a little thank you squeak. <laughs> and then I'm really rad and oh, smiling <laughs> really to myself rad. and snuggling Pip, who I've taken back from the knocked out Keefe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, you kind of rejoin your group, a uh, little, little pep in your step and, uh, and you're kind of like big grin on your face and, and Dolan's kind of like standing there with you and he kind of turns over to you and he goes, what, Scott, you're in such a good mood. Oh, just don't even, don't even worry about it. I was just really, like, devoted to this uh, monster slaying is all. Just very devoted. <laughs> and then I just snuggle Pip some more. And uh, Dolan kind of, like, hefts his, his weapon over his shoulder as he does literally every episode and kind of laughs a bit. Goes, all right, keep your secrets then. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> goes back to everything, standing with everyone. And Siphius brings the elevator up. Uh, and as it kind of like goes into the central spire, you guys follow him in a hurry down into another area away from everything. It, uh, it kind of brings you into a, an elevator uh, on the side. And you think like, okay, yeah, this thing goes up. And then the elevator you guys are all standing on starts kind of going sideways in like a, a spiral motion around the, the central spire kind of area until it comes to a stop at uh, entryway to kind of like a, 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 a control room almost. Uh, it's like a fancy, very ornate looking door and um, Siphius kind of walks up to it and he puts his hand on it and he motions for David to come over and David puts his hand on it too. And they both say the same phrase and mimic the same motions and the, the door kind of opens. And, uh, and as you kind of look inside of this room, uh, you can kind of hear the snowstorm outside uh, is like really a lot less now. And as this door opens, it's just you, uh, you four. So you're holding Keefe, uh, Peru still under your arm. Or, or how are you holding Keefe, sorry, like cradled? Just, yeah, yeah, like cradled like a, a little sleeping poop covered baby. Okay, so a little <laughs> sleeping poop covered gnome in your arms. You guys all smell pretty bad, except for Kip now, who smells a lot less worse. Um, you're all standing there like, you look like you've had the shit beaten out of you and been covered in shit, and lots of shit's gone down, and holy shit. But now you guys are here, and uh, the door opens, and Dylan um, kind of turns around, and he, he kind of looks you all up and down, and then he kind of goes, so you killed it then? Uh, yeah, Sifia, show him the rock. Si uh, oh, Sifius? right. I'm Sifia. <laughs> Sifia? 
was like, yes, Hello, sir, Sirius. 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 And he kind of, he walks up to Delanum and, uh, and like very cordially kind of like almost takes a knee and hands it to his master. And Delanum hesitantly reaches for the rock. And as he closes his fingers around it, he gets a sense of like, like this is okay to touch now. And he kind of, he kind of looks at it a bit and, um, he sighs a deep sigh of relief. And he kind of looks up at everybody and he goes, well, I, let's hope the damage isn't too uh, deep. And, uh, and he turns around to kind of like emphasize this. And before, before he kind of starts doing his thing in the uh, control room, is there anything anyone wants to say or do uh, to each other or to anyone in the assembly before I- Is the I, magistrate uh, here? No, he's not. You're in a room full of stone oh. singers. <laughs> That's about it. And the only people with you are Siphius, David, and the four of you right now. And uh, uh, everyone else kind of broke off from you as you guys were rushing up into this elevator. So it's just the four of you and uh, and Siphius, David, in a room full of stone singers. And it looks fairly barren in here. There's lots of like stone platforms, but nothing is like doing anything at the moment. I'm oh, good. All right, Kip, you want to do anything or say anything before we move on to what is probably the final monologue? Uh, no, I'm good as well. I'm just going to look at my comrades and give them a nice smile and nod. Uh, we did it kind of thing. Yeah, that was good shit. That was some good shit. The role's not what? so much, but I mean, just it was good. <laughs> Uh, Kifi, Kifi gently snores and, uh, and as she sits there, she mumbles in her sleep and she's like, um, thank you, D Baker, for gifting a tier one sub to Dargon898. <laughs> thank Kinda you. Like back to sleeping. And, uh, Laszlo, is there any, anything else you want to say at all before we? Absolutely. What's I would like to walk up to the, uh, the master stone singer mm -hmm. and I would like to shake his hand and thank him for his grace and his intelligence. And I would also like to pat him on his back and, and whisper in his ear about the passing magistrate. I have an interest in taking the job. Um, so the, the stone singer kind of, he, he laughs to himself and, uh, and he goes, that's definitely something we can talk about if we get out of this situation. Thank you, my good sir. All right, and he, and he kind of like, he nods his head at everybody one at a time and kind of pauses at Keefe and rankles his eyes a little bit and is like, okay, whatever. And, and uh, after nodding to all of you, um, he goes, uh, let's, let's see if this thing can move again, shall we? Crossing my fingers. Let's go. All right. And you've still got roll 20 up, Dara, with the ability to hear music, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Can you uh, let me know how loud that is? Mm -hmm. Could it be I a little it, louder? Maybe a little bit louder. Yeah, it should be good. What do you guys think? Okay. You guys can hear it? Okay. All right. As the high singer leads you all into the control room for the city, the stone singers take their places amongst the strange arcana that you can only guess the purpose of that live at the various stations around the place that, for all intents and purposes, fills the role of what one could call a brain for the city of Edders. Delanom approaches a central platform situated in the exact center of the room, and as he does so, a free-floating orb of solid white marble lowers into the uh, from the ceiling into his field of view. With intricately precise movements of the hand, he weaves and shapes the marble before him as if liquid, until it takes the form of a highly detailed replica of the city of Edders itself. The High Singer and his assembled acolytes make ready the same routines and preparations of years past to bring the colossal arcane structure to life. A complicated ballet of hand motions and quiet whispers, 
washing the room with light and sound and delicate adjustments a thousand times over until every performer reaches a harmony of work and magic. Their purpose is clear and their minds unburdened. With a deep breath drawn forth from the stale, cold air, Delanon, master of his craft, longest living human in recent memory, and first among the chosen shapers of stone for the city of Edders, speaks but one word as the cacophony of busy work simmers to a low hum within the command hub. Move. And with that, we end the fourth episode of chapter one. <laughs> The cliffhangers! The cliffhangers! Oh, shit! Whoa, (laughs) chapter one complete. (gasps) Super cool. Good job, everybody. Round of applause, especially for uh, our dungeon master, Dylan Silver Kestrel. Holy shit, amazing uh, storytelling. Really good job. That was wicked. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I love doing it. And if you folks at home, let me just play the music real quick. (laughs) This is the wrap up section. This is where we bring our adventure to a close and address everybody. Thank you all very much for tuning in to the final episode of chapter one. Um, We're (laughs) sorry, DeviantArt said it stalls in chat. (laughs) Like you just hear the loud sound of somebody trying to start an engine. (laughs) uh cool yeah so yeah that was uh that was the final episode of chapter one we will be continuing the uh with uh chapter two next week um so same bat time same bat channel uh it'll be episode one of chapter two so you guys can tune in then to figure out what happened how things are going to go down you know if, if anything came of it Um, And also, if you want to make sure that we can get everything together to do so and keep this going, we have a Patreon now for this project. We announced it earlier in the stream, but there's no harm in plugging it again in a million times until we literally are blue in the face. You already beat me to it there, damn it. Oh yeah, I'm on that shit. I had that (laughs) pre-typed out. I had that pre-typed out. But if you guys go to patreon.com slash minkles and dragons, that's minkles and dragons, because the at and symbol isn't allowed in the name for some stupid reason. Uh, And then we also have a Twitter for the project. Uh, Minkles and dragons is the Twitter name. You can go there for updates. And uh, if you guys go to our Patreon and want to become a supporter of our project, we have special rewards for different tiers available to people. Um, We'll also be implementing a system when somebody donates to a certain uh, height of regular contribution is at the beginning and end of every session. We will bring up a GIF in the area that you see over here where the, the map is displayed. And we will literally begin and end every session by worshiping a shrine of you in thanks for your contributions to our project. Yeah. So if you like the idea of people treating you like a literal god before and ever after every broadcast, consider donating to one of our higher tiers for our Patreon. And a big shout out to uh, Lord Zach Bora, who has become our very first patron. Thank yes, you so absolutely. much, Zach. We really, Not really like appreciate that. it. Becoming Thank the you. first contributor of hopefully many to our Patreon to keep this project going. <laughs> so go ahead and spread the word, share it with your friends. Uh, we would love it if you guys could go, uh, could, you know, let people know, hey, these nerds are looking for some money to, to be nerds some more. <laughs> and if somebody is like, that seems stupid, then you hit them until they give money to you. Yeah, that's, that's how you solve everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and we also no. have, uh, in my Discord, we actually have a channel dedicated to Minkles and Dragons. If you want to continue the conversation there, um, it is just called Minkles and Dragons in the Discord that I just linked there or down below. Yeah, absolutely. And so I wanted to just pass on my thanks to everybody here, uh, not only the audience, but thank you very much, Dara, for making this project a possibility. Thank you, sir. And being a hilarious actress who oh. uh, you know contributes to this quite a lot. Thank and unfortunately, you. Saji had to go to a work event. Um, but it, I will I will say to her now, in case she probably watches the VOD, Thank you very much, Saji, for your Thank you, Saji. Sleeping your, sleeping Keefy. Yeah, sleeping Keefy. You your your hilarious magical mayhem contributes so much goofy shit to this adventure and has definitely enhanced the comedic value of our of our experience mm-hmm, tenfold. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Uh, and then also thank you so much, MWB, playing Laszlo for your contributions in, in, our, in our artwork and for the portraiture and your hilarious role as Laszlo so far in our adventures. Ooh. So thank you, Claire. And uh, thank you very much to Nixus again for volunteering to be one of our guest uh, players, carrying on Prue Sprout, Sprout's narrative as you help the players to overcome the monster within the deep. Uh, so thank you very much for your quick wit and, and humorous contributions to our adventures. Always. And uh, and yeah, does anyone have, uh, this is before we end the session uh, completely, the stream completely, unless are you doing more streaming after this, Dara? Uh, I, I was going to, but I have like a splitting fucking headache that has like, since we started, has just been getting worse and worse. So I'm actually not going to continue streaming. I, I took Advil and it still fucking hurts as much as I legitimately want to keep streaming. I'm going to call it because fuck it hurts. <laughs> okay, okay. And I have puppies so, to deal with, I guess, as well, so. Yeah, Daryl won't be continuing the stream after this, so we'll be ending shortly, but before we do end, we open up uh, to the viewers to contribute any questions or uh, give any uh, feedback that they want to give to us. So if you guys want to say anything right now to us, feel free. And if you have questions or want to just say something about the adventure, or if you have fan art, which we love, and I will, I will suck dick for fan art. Man. Please, like, I, I won't, I won't, but I will be like, suck dick for fan art. For yeah, fan art. definitely. I'll, I'll be like, man, you need me to fucking like kill your boss or something for some fan art. And like, I'll do it. Like that's, that's <laughs> addict fully. It's and, fucking and dedication. So if you want to go into our Discord channel on Dara's Discord um, for Minkles and Dragons and post any fan art or questions or any comments you have there, we will totally happily take that from you as well. And anybody watching this, maybe if this is in the VOD or a recording, um, same to you if you're watching it and this is not live, please still tune into that channel and just be like, hey, I just watched your thing and it'll be like 4 a.m. on a Wednesday and I'll still see it and I'll be like, Damn, good for you, man. I love you so much. Uh, you know what? Let me compose like a 40 line sonnet in your honor or whatever, right? So you, if you're watching at home, watching the remote recording, uh, you know, please feel free to contribute even though you're not live and tune in to us when we're live. So uh, it looks like we we don't have anybody asking any questions, mainly just putting I, hype. I, I have a, something to say. Yeah, Lazlo, for, I mean, for, go ahead. As me, uh, for anyone watching, I mean, I understand a lot of you know how D&D uh, &D works, and I just want to say that every thing that happened, all of the craziness was all true role play. It was all, it all just came from each player and the randomness of roles and like all the amazing things that happened were just because they they just happened. It was by chance and good ideas and interesting character and actual role play and like, you know, ki killing the monster, the whole gun spawning, gold in the gun thing, you know, <laughs> all the moves that Nixus made. I mean, that was all just role play. And so, you know, I want you guys to, to kind of take that in for a second because it ended up amazingly way more than i even thought was possible and i just i'm so impressed by everything that's happened and so yeah i'm just just flat out <laughs> did he pay those bards no. i guess I, I will pay <laughs> oh yeah no no we're gonna have like being held accountable yeah we're gonna, you're gonna have a bill from the wizards of the coast oh we're, gonna, we're gonna have a fucking party for them because they they clinched it honestly <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I still yeah. didn't get to steal anything. Fuck. Don't worry. They'll be. <laughs> this one was more of like an intense action-related thing. <laughs> the next chapter will definitely be less intense and more about you guys kind of like setting the stage for the narrative of all the coming chapters following that, more or less. So this was this was the taste. You guys got to eat the maraschino cherry here. So now if you want the Sunday, make sure you show your support for us, mm -hmm. either financially or tuning in and just being a viewer, giving your feedback. If you just want to log into chat and be like, penises are funny, I will be fine with that as <laughs> you know, like, they are. Of course and you would be fine with that. that you're here <laughs> and supporting us because you're typing in chat. It doesn't matter what you say, unless you're an asshole, in which case, please don't do that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Likewise. <laughs> oh my god. Too good. Well, thank you guys. Is there anything else? Or do we want to go on a little raiderino? I've already picked a... I've already picked a target to, to, to raid, so... Anything else? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. A either of you guys have anything to say? Like, I'm, uh, I'm good. I just thank you, everybody. Thank you, the uh, viewers. Are, are we going to do a last GIF? Oh, right, a GIF. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We should all figure out where Saji is and, like, point at her and look like we're yelling at her. To, like, yeah, wait. yeah. Okay, she's here for me. Right no here, other right? way, MW. Okay. okay. Dylan and, down. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, I think we're all good. Are we, uh, we're trying to like wake her up? Or like, we're like, yeah! Ah! Look like you're yelling and trying to wake her up. Okay, ready? Three, two, oh wait, I have to click recording. Okay, three, two, one. Jeez Louise, Papa Cheese. Uh, roll the credits. Shit together. It's legit. Uh, again, yeah, thank you for those subscribes today. Devin coming in with that gift sub. Um, what else did we have here? We had a couple subs come in. Let me load this up, this bad boy up. Uh, Mr. Spacebar, Miss Sunshine. Uh, thank you. Chinchilla of Despair, thank you for that follow. I missed that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kaz with that resub, 15 months. SK with that host. Tatooine with that follow. Thank you. And Tobias. Hi, Tree. Thank you very much for that follow, guys. Thank you again so much for being here. It means the world to me. Uh, we're This is our little baby project, and we really want it to, to grow and be successful. So uh, you just being here means the absolute world. Thank you again.